And so here we are finally with the Wheel of the Year. We're going to combine a little bit about the Wheel of the Year and our symbols. We start with Yule. Here's that snowflake. We're supposed to be thinking about winter, not the beach. <laughs> okay, Imbolc is next, which is, which is the, uh, it's still very cold out, but we're starting to think about spring. Ostara is the spring equinox. Beltane, oh, love and passion and lots of fun during Beltane. Love of every kind, okay? And then halfway through the year, we are at Letha. Lamas is our first harvest festival. Maybon is our second harvest festival and is the fall equinox. And Samhain. Last but not least, and the wheel of the year is Samhain. And then we begin all over again. Are you a friend of Rupert? Have you heard of Rupert before? Do you know about our books? Rupert's Tales, The Wheel of the Year. There's two of them. This one is Beltane, Letha, Lamas, and Maybon. And this one is for Samhain, Yule, Imbolc, and Ostara. These will teach you about the Wheel of the Year and how it is that we celebrate these different Sabbaths. Perhaps you've heard of Rupert time and time again. Maybe you know him and are already his friend. Like me, I'm a friend of Rupert. Or maybe somehow you've missed all of his tales. You've missed his fun and lessons and all the details. I will tell you Rupert is a rabbit. He's furry, brown, and young. And it seems no matter what he's learned, his lessons have just begun. Come along with Rupert as he learns all about the Wheel of the Year. And excuse me if I giggle when I ask you to lend me your ear. <laughs> Our first tale in the Wheel of the Year is about the year's longest night. Summer solstice or Letha is about the longest day. That's right. Rupert smiled to himself, leaning closer and stretching out one long ear. He was eager to learn more about the Sabbath and the Wheel of the Year. The bright star, one boy called out, all the way at the very top of the tree. Mistletoe, said Emily, with a green scarf where my daddy kisses me. The garland and Yule log and remember the wreath too. These were things that to Rupert were quite strange and new. We'll start with the star, said Stacy, way at the top of the tree. Do any of you know what it is? Can anyone tell me? Why, yes. Yes, they could. These children learned a lot that night, and Rupert did too. There are eight stories about the Sabbaths in our two books, Waiting for You. At Imbolc, which comes next, Rupert meets a new friend with bright, sparkly wings. <laughs> the fairy invites him to learn about milk and brooms and all kinds of other things. For people, my friend, Imbolc can be so many different things, the fairy said, twisting and turning and fluttering his wings. Halfway between Yule and Ostar, winter is on its way out, but still the dark time of the year and cold, there isn't any doubt. Imbolc reminds us that spring is coming before very long and gives us the chance to raise our voices in chant and in song. Rupert even learns how some awaken the, the, the spirits of spring by making a lot of noise using pots and pans of all things. Isn't that fun? And then at long last we come to the last story found in book two. Here God and Goddess have a surprise in store for Rupert and for you too. The sun was high, spring had sprung, and it was a beautiful day. The Lord and Lady were with him where he always hoped to stay. But there was a song that came from over the last hill, one that made his heart stop and gave him a happy thrill. He could hear the distant drum calling, Come one, come all! But that's not what he was doing. Oh no, not at all. No, that's not what he was doing. Instead, he was following his heart. And that, Rupert would tell you, is always the very best place to start. Yes, in these tales and stories you'll find Rupert has a lot to learn. So come on along with us as the wheel of the year makes its turn. Although Beltane's not where most people would probably choose to start. That's exactly where Rupert showed up in my dreams and in my heart. Then again, perhaps that was exactly the very best place to begin. Where Rupert, what Rupert learns is that love is the best place to start. Let's listen in. 
Beltane is a very special time of year, meant to celebrate passion and love, so that people will remember to take the time to make their lives below as it is above. The people you see here dancing around their May Eve fire, they are celebrating their own very human and very sacred desire. From shaking hands to caressing a child's sleeping face, touching each other is a natural thing to do among the human race. This and more is what our furry friend learns in a very special place from she who has many names, and from he who has green leaves for his face. In the books and pages, Rupert goes on to learn about the longest day. In this next tale, he meets a color-changing fairy along the way. Today is the longest day of the year, she said, when the sun takes a very long time to lay down his head. It's time, the fairy told him, for a change of the seasons, though it will be a while before you feel the reasons. That's the nature of nature, there isn't anything wrong. The days will go shorter and the nights will go long. You may believe me when I tell you he would rather the weather stayed hot. The fairy reminded him the days would turn cold whether he liked it or not. Our fairy friend isn't always happy to learn thing, the things he does along the way, but learn things, yes he does, and sometimes in the most marvelous of ways. At Lamas he hid near a tree to listen to a crone that was wise who answered children's questions about the whens and the where's and the whys. Lamas is a time for many things, she began. You can celebrate however you want. Oh, yes, you can. There are those who remember the sun king named Lu. His power begins to weaken now, just like it's supposed to. After the solstice of summer has passed us by, his presence and warmth slowly fade from the sky. And so some are sad at this time each year, thinking of the cold to come. Some shed their tears. There are those, too, who remember days filled with the sun, with laughter and love and long days of, of fun. So no matter if you cry or laugh, whatever you choose to do, remember there are many, of those, there are many who honor the god named Lou. At the end of her tale, she sends the children away, and they are alone, she and Rupert. You will have to read the story, though, to know, to know what he's given by the crone. The last of our stories of the four Sabbaths, which are covered in Book One, is about Maybon and how Rupert helps Melvin get his harvest all done. The weather starts to cool and many plants turn to brown from green. It's not the beginning of the year or its end, but somewhere in between. People use this day to welcome the beginning of the end of the year and to praise the Lord and Lady for all the blessings they hold dear. Melvin the Mouse is sometimes very bossy and sometimes very wise. Seldom does Rupert meet this friend without ending up with a surprise. The last tale, this last tale is no exception to that rule for Rupert and his small friend. For even though Rupert has a choice to make, he ends up happy in the end. So we have come to the end of the book, of the book and have no worry, have no fear. We have four more tales to read as we go through the wheel of the year. Now, I've already told you about three of them. And now we're going to go to the last one. Salmon is up next, where Rupert meets a little girl. Becky is her name. She recently lost her grandmother, so her world will never be the same. He hadn't seen the little girl come from behind. He hadn't heard her make a noise of any kind. She was suddenly right beside him, just right there, as if she had dis appeared from right out of thin air. She had reached and drawn him into her small arms. Somehow he knew she didn't mean him any harm. She had hair that was dark yellow, like some of the wheat he'd once seen, and she was wearing a ribbon on her wrist that was green. She had pressed her small nose into the fur of his ears, and then it had begun, the quiet snuffles and tears. Then Rupert watched a woman come walking through the trees, and thought just for a moment perhaps he should flee. She was somewhere between short and tall, as people go, wearing a long skirt and a silver ring on one toe. She looked at the girl and said, We've been looking for you. Come join us in circle and bring your little friend too. And so Rupert learned a lot about people and their tears. He also learned about this special time on the Wheel of the Year. And now you know more about the Wheel of the Year too. And as each Sabbath approaches, as we go through the Wheel of the Year ourselves, we'll, t we'll teach you more about what there is to know and how other people celebrate too.